right, let's have a look at how we can make some custom lighting for this specific product in this specific angle. T-shirt comes with a lot of predefined uh, great HDRIs that you can use for product shots. But I've found that for when you need it to be really perfect, uh, the best way is to do it from the scratch using the HDRI editor. And it's quite fast and quite fun when you first get the hang of it. So I'll introduce you to that. To create your own HDRI, go to the environment tab and hit the environment editor button here. That brings up uh, this HDRI editor where you can uh, edit the HDRI. And I'll just move this one up so we can see both at the same time. You can either work on, uh, on the HDRI that you had selected already, or you can go to uh, the file menu and say new HDRI. If you are on a Windows machine, then uh, that menu is here. So go to file and hit, whoops, make sure that the HDRI editor is selected. Go to file and say new HDRI. I will go with a background color of some random gray because then I can always turn it on and off and adjust the, the <clears throat> adjust the um, intensity of it. But if I had it black from the beginning, I can't do anything with it. So I go with something gray and I go with a resolution of four by two K. Um, the bigger it is, the uh, greater the quality of the HDR is, especially if you have any visible reflections on your product. It's uh, by having it, big, it bigger, you avoid to have any visible pixels in your reflections. But I have found that for most shots, uh, four times two is is fine enough, and the file size is smaller than if you go with something bigger. So play around with that if you run into any problems. Hit create. We now have a completely gray HDRI. So for this shot, I want to go with something uh, dynamic and contrastful. So to begin with, I'll just dial this brightness down to zero. So now everything is complete black. And I then go to the pins tab and hit this plus sign to add in my first pin. Um, what I would like to do with the first pin I add is to uh, define a shadow for the product. So if I drag this up, you see that uh, we get some more light on the scene. And if I drag it to the sides, you can see that we start to get a shadow moving, you know, going in this direction. And if we move it over here, the shadow is uh, in the other direction. I, and I would like this shadow to uh, to fall on this side. Um, as you see, I need to crank up the brightness, go with something like five. This gives us something really cool. And if you want the, the shadow to be sharper, you could go with a, a lower radius and then turn up the brightness as well. So I think uh, something like this for the shadow is quite cool. Um, right now I'm not looking at the general lighting, but just on the shadows. So if I just want to move this in the uh, horizontal direction, I go to this uh, azimuth and adjust that. And by adjusting the polar settings, I adjust the height of this pin. Mm. Sometimes I like to just go to the, to the other side to see uh, what that would look like. And I actually think that it looks pretty cool for this shot. Yeah, let's try and go with something like that. I'll add in another pin that I will use to uh, draw the shapes of the, uh, of the binoculars here. So I go down with this new pin selected, say uh, set highlight, hit the set highlight button, and you see uh, this tooltip here that if you command click, it adds a, a new highlight. 
Uh, and if you have already one selected, you can drag or click with the left mouse button and point where you want that reflection to uh, be positioned. And let me just check. I think that a position down here on the side is really cool. Um, might want to bump up the uh, radius and the brightness as well. Hit done. Um, then I like to add some fall off um, and for the round or circular pins, I like to use exponential. Um, yeah, the exponential one as it, especially when you look in the reflection, it's not uh, the same brightness all over, but it fades like to the edges, but still has a sharp edge. Just the brightness to five, maybe. And um, let's see this pin alone. And actually, I think that I want to uh, have this pin over here as well. Something like this. So you see, it's uh, a lot of back and forth. Then I want to add in a pin that lights up the, the background here. So I, again, click the set highlight button and click here. Um, right now there's just too much lighting in the scene. It be begins to become flat. So sometimes it helps to, to isolate them and look at one at one at the time. Um, and perhaps if I do something like this, having lighting from the back, that's pretty cool. What if we bump up the radius? Okay, so I want to, uh, what I'm looking at here is the, the width of the reflections here. So if I go the higher radius, it sort of just becomes one, um, but if I have it, lower we get all these uh, separated, which I think looks kind of cool and helps to, to tell the shape of the product. So what if I go with something like this, turn it up and also give it some fall off. And I'm looking here to see how it looks. It's uh, it's it's not really showing up here. I like that a lot. So now we just need some light to uh, to draw the shapes here from the from the ground plane. Um, let me see if we can use some of this. Maybe this big, soft one. Draw it down here. Make it even bigger. That could work. Sure, and then maybe some uh, some lighting to uh, light up the interior of this part. Let's see if we can use this one. I'll go ahead and delete that one and click set highlight and then command click or control click if you're on Windows to uh, add some lighting in here. And uh, if it's tough to see the contribution of, of a pin, you can hide the other ones, or you can go to uh, and change the color of this specific pin to some really clear. And right now it's not really adding anything to the scene because it's below the ground plane. But as soon as I move it up, it should get visible. Uh, let me just hide these other twos. Yeah. Looks like the angle is completely wrong. Let me just check. Seems like we need to get way brighter anyways. Here we go. So I'm looking where I need to position it to get a lot of light in here. And it seems like this position is really great. So I switch back to 
my white light and I will show these other lights um, and then I take the brightness way down. So sometimes it helps to get back to zero and then maybe just add it a one, maybe three. Nice. I think we are starting to get somewhere. Um, what if, what if this was brighter? So this would be like the main light source. Then we had this one to get some light in here. And then we have this one to light up the back. Sometimes I also like while doing the, the lighting to hold down command and left click and drag in the scene to just rotate uh, the lighting environment around. That would be control left click on Windows um, to see if there's anything else that, that works better. And actually I, I see here that it works better to have the, the bright light coming from the left side where we have some, some room. It feels, feels more natural in a way than if we have it from over here. So actually, I think I want to drag it over here and then assess the lighting. I like these reflections, I think they look good. And uh, this one, it's not giving too much. Let me see. Yeah, this is quite cool. So actually, I think I can leave this one out. Maybe soften this one up a bit. Make it brighter. Go to this other one. I think I'll, whoops. Bring it up here. Bump up the brightness just slightly to four. And also I want to add the fall off to this one. So there's a, a more a bit more detail in this, um, in the reflection and then bump up the brightness. Nice. I'll go with eight and then if I look at the front here, it's quite dark. So I want to add in a pin, set the highlight uh, here and see if I can get anything that helps to light that up. Not really. Problem is that the ground plane probably is blocking all of it. Let's uh, delete that one, turn these two on. Um, yeah, so what if we drag it all up here? Or this is where, where it uh, helps to have this uh, gray background that we can add in just a bit of brightness. I'm quite happy with this one. As you see, uh, it's something that you need to tweak and adjust uh, into infinity to get it exactly as you like to. But yeah, at some point you just have to settle and, and move on. Um, so when you're ready uh, with your HDRI, you have to go to file and save as and save it as a new HDRI. And uh, I go to my desktop folder, save it in my resource folder here in MISC, save it as um, 
you know, close, and you can save it anywhere you want on your computer, maybe in your default keys, keyshot library, so you always have it in your, your library when you're working on other projects. Um, but yeah, save it somewhere. And then we are almost ready with the lighting. I forgot to, uh, to say that um, sometimes I also like to add a bit of color information to the lighting. So especially using this Kelvin slider, um, maybe adding a bit of blue or a bit of uh, warm light, depending on my need. So I actually think it looks quite cool with some uh, warm light coming from this side. And then maybe uh, go to this pin and add a hint of blue light. Mm, maybe not. No, I think I'll go with the white for this one and then we can always tint it a bit in Photoshop. Maybe crank it up just slightly to a brightness of nine. Yep, hit the save button when you do any changes and uh, let's move on with some final adjustments before outputting it and editing it in Photoshop. 